let's go ahead and talk about cooling off those GPUs because the 30 series definitely has a problem. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 graphics cards modded with copper shims up to 46 degrees Celsius drop in GDDR6 memory temperatures. And Cool My GPU, who has been in here quite a bit, and you can find him in our Rocket Chat, has been selling copper plates for a lot of the GPUs. And this is basically the idea behind it. Now, it is important to note that this can be dangerous and at scale isn't really practical in my humble opinion because you are you know risking damage to the gpu it's uh, even more difficult than just putting on thermal pads and thermal paste and uh, it's very time consuming as well but if you have a really problematic gpu this is the, the best option outside of moving to, of course, either full on like water cooling with a water block with an active back plate water block or alternatively moving to immersion cooling. Depending on pricing, that could, of course, you know, change things as well, depending on where you're at there. But let's go ahead and get into this. We all know uh, just hot, just how hot GDDR6X memory chips can get on NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards, but modders have come up with a solution. One of the key upgrades for the high-end NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards was the use of GDDR6X memory modules offering over 18 gigabits per second of memory speeds. These memory chips are the best in terms of bandwidth performance, but they also happen to get really hot, reaching over 100 degrees Celsius in some cases. In my experience, in all cases, except for the 3070s and below, I guess, maybe not always. And one of the tropes that's like super annoying right now, too, is your RMAs aren't approved for high memory temperatures. And that's a big problem because what they say is, it's okay, these memory modules can run at 110 degrees Celsius. But what they aren't saying, which is the point of it, is if it's at 110 degrees Celsius, it is more than likely being thermal throttled, which means it would be getting hotter, except they're down, the memory's downclocking itself and performing worse, resulting in worse performance on your hash rate and whatever other memory intensive tasks you're doing with the GPU and staying under 110 degrees Celsius because it's thermal throttling, but they still won't RMA it because they say that's within spec. And that's some BS from NVIDIA and their board partners, and they need to get their act together, in my humble opinion. It's something that's been frustrating me for a while. So while the graphics card manufacturers have used thick thermal pads between the GDDR6X dies and thermal solutions, they don't seem to offer adequate cooling performance. Some users have seen a huge drop in temperatures by replacing these thermal pads with those that offer high thermal density, but modders have gone one step ahead. YouTuber and hardware modder Dandyworks posted a video on his channel showcasing how he dropped temperatures of his Asus RTX 3070 Ti Tough graphics card memory from 110C to 64C by replacing the thermal pads with copper shim pads. The copper pads have two variants. One measures 0.2 millimeters in thickness for graphics cards with cold plates shared by the GPU and the VRAM, and a second thicker version, which is the same thickness as the thermal pads in the case uh, the cold plate is not shared. These copper shim pads are inexpensive and usually sell for around, and it doesn't have a price, which is funny, but the thermal paste needs to be applied on both ends of the copper shim pads to ensure adequate thermal dissipation. In the case of Dandyworks, the user saw a drop from 110C to 64 degrees Celsius, uh, which is a drop of 46 degrees Celsius and a quite major one, which was evaluated using prolonged testing periods with crypto mining. Crypto mining was used since it puts the most stress on the memory and it loves the new GDDR6X dies. All true. The fan speed was set to 100%, 3000 RPMs in the case of the Asus Tough model, and the GPU clock speed was lowered too since it doesn't offer much use case when mining. Now, some things 
that should be mentioned is that opening up a graphics card and applying this mod will void the warranty no matter the region. Another thing is that the copper shim pads do have the tendency to apply more pressure on the fragile components such as GDDR6X dies under them. Uh, so if more than necessary mounting pressure is applied, they can result in permanent damage to the chips. The other thing is, is like if you're going to do this, that's very important because there's going to be a fine line between getting the heat sink to properly cool the actual core and not put too much pressure on the components where you're going to cause damage. So if you do decide to do this, do it at your own risk and be very careful when you are basically uh, putting the cooler back on. The other note, right, is like um, essentially, well, yeah, that covers it. Never mind. That's what I'm talking about. This is, you, you don't want to put too much pressure on it, but you want to put enough pressure on it to where you are sealing up and connecting with the GPU core. Because if you don't connect with the GPU core, then that's going to be overheating and be just as much of a problem. So video cards managed to get a list of users from hardware Lux forums who happen to have done similar modding on their graphics cards. And that can be seen below. Once again, while there are massive benefits that can be obtained from this mod on the GeForce RTX 30 series graphics cards, there are also some huge drawbacks such as voiding the warranty and potential damage to the memory dice. It is advised that anyone who wants to try this mod out does so at his own risk. Dun, 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 dun. So there it is. That's what you can do. There are plenty of places and forums where you can check it out. Like I said, uh, Cool My GPU is actually selling plates. For the most part, the plates that he's selling is for the back plate, I believe. But, you know, there is the option, of course, of uh, this as well. And I think he has those as well. So, um, last I heard, he does have a lot of orders. So, I don't know if he's super far behind right now either. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.